want to get as many people in here before we get going. We're, we're really trying hard that everything we add through all this, um, this pandemic world and everything, um, that we, there are things that we keep, you know, like some of our curriculum that we've started and some of the new um, uh, technology things we've started. And I'll tell you this, for, uh, for parents, I think this Zoom meeting is a great idea. Uh, and we'll probably keep this form as we move forward because that way you don't have to get up and, and we can get everything you got done. We can record it and show it to people that, um, that, are, that can make tonight. Um, so anyway, I'll get started and I'll keep watching for people coming in. I'm Mr. Gray and uh, Mr. Boyd is somewhere in here also. Hello. I don't know if it'll show me. Hello. Good looking guy. Glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, he said that. Right. Like? Good-looking guy with glasses. So anyway, um, <laughs> now it's it's really. I wish we could kind of see everybody. Um, I've told the kids today that the hard part about this is we. It kind of throws us off of what we do best at times, and um, getting to know the kids at the beginning and goofing around with them and all that stuff. We don't really get to do that a lot. It's kind of hard one way. Um, Mr. Miller, who's the high school band director. Um, he made a comment like this, and I think he's exactly right. And you all have all been on Zoom meetings because we're all doing it. And it feels like it's a one-way thing. It feels like you're giving into this thing and you don't feel like it's coming back at you, you know. Uh, and that's a very hard thing for us to get used to. But we will, and we'll get used to it because we could be here for a while. So um, we hope we're not, but we could be. So um, we'll teach them the best we can. So, um Mr. Boyd will be watching for questions as, as we go, and you can just put them in the chat. If, if I don't cover it, uh, at the end, we'll go through and look at what I didn't cover, okay? Um, the best way to get a hold of Mr. Boyd and me is through email. Um, and lately, it seems like we've just, just like you, we've just been bombarded. And sometimes it, we could skip something by accident. So don't be afraid to bug us if we, if something slips through the cracks, because sometimes we don't, sometimes, especially me, if I need, if I'm thinking about something and I tell this to Mr. Boyd all the time, I need to chew on that for a second. And if I sometimes set it aside and don't come back to it, I do need a reminder sometimes. So please give us, uh, a, give us, just bug us. If, if you can't just keep sending us emails if for some reason, I, I'll usually definitely answer on the second one if something happened. Um, we're going to talk a little bit. Um, oh, the other things for information. Um, we have a website, which is eastband.weebly.com. And we send a lot of stuff through there. Uh, every now and then you can see our schedules for the week and things like that. So that's a good reference point. Now, we are trying really hard to get everything on, um, you know, on Schoology also. That way we, we're supposed to do that. And so we're trying to do that also. So, but, but as a fallback, in case you need it, there's always the uh, um, website that you can go back to and check. Like this week, uh, the, if that's where all the Zoom calls and everything are and everything like that. So a um, couple, uh, couple little things um, that maybe y'all haven't thought of, and we've told the kids this, but we'll go ahead and t tell you, and this is gonna be the practice set up for their home. We're gonna go there now. Um, when, if you can, I know we, we told them, and, and, but we know how that goes. So um, they need a chair that's not padded. They need a chair that is, do you know, y'all see this? Y'all see whose feet don't touch the ground? Yeah, I see. That's me on this side over here, on, on that side, yeah. And his hit the ground. Hmm, okay. I'm shorter than he is, so he had to make that point, I think. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, we want them to have a good straight back chair, not a lot of cushions and things like that, and no arms. Um, they need to have, they're gonna, we are going to talk through here in a minute some of the supply things that we're, we're talking about and, and we'll be sending those lists home on Monday-ish. That's when we're looking to get them to you. Um, so, but we'll, there are some things they need. So, but they'll have their iPads out. They'll have a metronome, which in the packet, there'll be a metronome, but for right now, you can just, you can Google a metronome and get a free one right there to use until we get the good one. Uh, the metronome they will be getting is actually a tuner metronome combined. And so it's a really good thing. Um, and just make sure it's as quiet as possible. Uh, I will see, I'll give you some suggestions. If, if you have 
um, a big closet and it's got a lot of clothes in it, that would be a good place to stuff them in for a while because at the beginning it's pretty loud and, and that would be a good way and, or have them in a place where they're blowing into some material, not like real clothes because they need to hear what they're doing. Uh, but especially if you have relatives at home and stuff like that, um, they're going to need to get comfortable. Uh, and unfortunately, the, and, and we're in new territory here too. I've been teaching 27 years and this is unlike anything. Um, so I, I would never have started beginners like this ever, but you know what, we're going to, we're not going to get behind in this. Uh, we're going to do it virtual if we need to, you know, so, so they need a place where they can get confident like they would up here. And that is going to be a little bit noisy at times. Um, especially certain instruments that um, oboe, clarinet, boy, they can get really up there and loud. Um, uh, some of the instruments will sound like barnyard animals when they start, and that's okay. They're probably supposed to. Uh, but then we'll, I know everybody's going, oh my gosh, and y'all are working from home. I'm real sorry. <laughs> I'm real sorry. <laughs> everybody's going, so oh. normally, if you don't mind me, mind me button in. Oh, jump, jump. Um, no Normally, we don't let the kids go home with instruments right. for um, a month, six weeks, so that we get some of those sounds out of the way. <laughs> um, but let's blame this on COVID, right? Everything's yeah. getting blamed on COVID. So we're going to yeah. throw that one out there, too. Yeah, you're going to hear things that, yeah, um, that we try not to, we try not to let you hear. So, um, but it, it is, I think we just, we have to get as close to normal as we can. You know, so that's what we're going to try to do. Um, if we see negative things happening, if we start this process and we don't see people actually improving like we should see it and all that stuff, we might slow down some until we can see them face to face. Um, but we're going to make that call as we as we get closer, you know, to everything. So just make sure their practice areas as quiet as possible. Be creative. Uh, just remember, boy, your uh, any kind of fabric around them will help them. Uh, some of you have these uh, closets with a lot of clothes in them and that would really be a good spot for them because it, it would be the quietest place for them probably, uh, especially if they have one. Um, we will start uh, tomorrow and I sent the link out. We're going to start our screenings tomorrow. And this is not just for percussion screening. This is uh, especially the people that didn't fill out any forms for us in May. If you didn't, I really need to get you into these screenings um, because just because they were put into a class, some of those were default classes. And what you need to understand is the thing that we try to do, we understand if we put the right person on the right instrument and their beginning is a lot more comfortable and it's a lot easier, they're going to stay. Mr. Boyd and I were real fortunate that we have about, I'm gonna say close to an 80% retention sometimes higher and we do that and we're worried about this year because we spend a lot of time putting students on instruments this year we got pictures and i've got a 19 foot screen in here in the band hall it's great and we put your daughter or son up on this big old screen on those pictures you sent us and we kept them yes they will be used again some of them are hysterical and so yeah because we made them show their teeth and stuff you know so yeah we'll use those again uh, at the end of the year, we're going to show them to them. And they're, they're going to enjoy that a lot, I bet. But we tried to go off a lot of what we saw and how it would fit them. And I think we got pretty close with a lot of them. In fact, a lot of people got their first, first choice. And so, um, and that ended up being, it looks right. It's all that. Uh, the only thing I caution you about is this. If we get back together, we might see things that are totally um, that, that we didn't see until we got them face to face. And if that's the case, um, we'll talk about the rental stuff here in a minute and why this year of all years, the rental thing might be the best and smartest way to go. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But um, there's, we could, I don't want to say we're wrong in this, but this could be a year that we miss some things, you know, where like uh, there's, there's an amateur, the, the muscles they take to play an instrument, there's certain ones for a trumpet and there's certain one for a big instrument like a trombone. And sometimes we cross those two on accident and we might put a guy that should be on a bigger instrument on a trumpet. And there are the muscles on a trumpet really are very smaller and they're just different. I'm a trumpet player. That's 
that's probably why I can't open my mouth full because I played so much, but it's, it, there's a certain shape that they must have and we might miss those things. And so we, we just want to make sure they have every chance to be successful on their instruments, the ones we pick. So if on this screening, you're not comfortable face to face and I tell the kids, Hey, no, there is nobody going to be penalized for anything. And if you're not comfortable face to face, we totally get it. And, and what we want to do is uh, they need to let us know. You need to let us know. And um, what we'll do is we'll try to lead. We'll catch them at the end of class one day and we'll talk to them uh, a little more and we'll try to look at them close then. We'll do our best job at that point to try to get them taken care of. Uh, for the people coming in for the screenings uh, tomorrow, here's where they're going to be. We've got the new um, parking lot between Mockingbird and East, right? And if you drive all the way to the very back of it, you'll see the basketball courts down at the bottom. I think you all know where I'm talking about probably. And that corner building there is the brand new gym. What we're going to do with them, we'll have, and we'll have a sign that says band in or here. That's what we'll say. It'll be right there. You'll see a stand with a sign on it that says band in or here. And we'll, we'll put it there. We'll open the door and they, well, this is what we want to have happen. They're going to walk straight in. Just them. Parents can't get out with them. It's just going to, they're going to come in by themselves. Uh, Mr. Boyd and I are going to be gloved up, masked up, shields up, and all sorts of stuff. And everything we use to screen them and then on to, uh, tomorrow and then on Tuesday is stuff that will not be used again until it is um, ran through some disinfectant, through a dishwasher, and then back through disinfectant again. So uh, we are pulling out our old bag of tricks. We have balloons that we're going to use some things with, and they'll keep those balloons. We have pinwheels that are going to blow to make certain shapes. We're, we're going to use a lot of stuff, uh, but they can't grab anything. And those of you that have been through this before know that is extremely weird because we like to see them grab those instruments and look at them. But uh, in, in this day and time, we just got to be very careful and we're going to be very careful. So um, that's what that will look like uh, for people trying out for percussion. You will do a percussion rhythm test for me or Mr. Boyd, and then we will check you on to see Ms. Chernow or we will, we, will, we will not check you on to see, you know what I mean? So um, with percussion, there's one thing you need to know. If you aren't supposed to be in that class, you don't want to be in that class. You think you do, <laughs> but it really takes a specific person to play percussion. And um, it's, it's very different. And, um, and hey, we hope everybody that's that wants to do it, gets to do it. And it tends to work that way. Uh, I had a really good set player about five years ago that he came in and he was incredible, a great set player, but he wasn't set to play percussion. Uh, and I put him on trumpet and he went all the way through the high school. He loved it. And he played set and trumpet both. And he, it was great for him. And he says, he told me when he was a senior that that was the best thing he's ever done. So sometimes what we think we want to accomplish we can't now um, the number of spots are limited uh, but that is up to the percussion instructor from the district we check x amount on probably about 15 on 14 something like that and then she will decide on 8 to 10 probably 8 with our numbers it, it, it goes by how our numbers are the percentages of the numbers here so um, and then she will stop it there so and it's totally in her court and she decides at the end uh, and we we trust her and she's done a great job picking people to this point so that's what that's how that works um final instrument uh, mr gray yes can i interrupt you so yeah, we've got some questions about um how do you schedule that that screening oh. um mr gray sent out an email a couple days ago um you should have gone to um, every email address that Coppell isd yeah. has for you and there's a sign up genius link in there and you just go in and, and pick a time. Mr. Boyd, can we put that on the top of the website like pretty soon? Maybe we could do uh, that. You can just, yeah. Yeah, he's going to pop it, it on tonight. Yeah, he'll get it on the website tonight. Maybe right now. I'll try right now. <laughs> and that way, if you go to eastband.weebly.com, you can find it pretty quick. Hey, guys, and I know, trust me, if I'm getting hit with the emails that I'm getting hit with, 
I'll be honest. I got one from one of our district people. I've been in Coppell since 94. I love everybody here. I got one from a person I know real well, and I just went, I can't read that whole thing. <laughs> I just can't read the whole thing. It's so much information coming at you. There's a point you just go, okay, I'll have to read that tomorrow. Uh, and, and we get it. And because of that, I'm one of the few band directors. I won't send stuff out weekly. I don't do that. I'll send stuff out when you need to know it. And I, I will think out the timing. I will watch the timing and it'll be when you need it. Uh, you can always email me if you have questions of what's coming up on the calendar. And right now we don't have, we're really taking it nine weeks at a time right now. Uh, so we don't have our full calendar out. Normally you would have, you would really have almost two years of a calendar out at this point, but right now we're not doing that. Uh, so you would always go to the calendar, be able to like, Hey, I want to fly so-and-so at this point, uh, what's going on in, in school. And you could see the, there's a, Oh, there's a band concert on this date. And so I can get my tickets on this date or something like that. And we usually get those. I would, I would say we're probably a year. We always do our yearly count calendar at least, but we're starting to get a year and a half out now, maybe more eventually. So, but right now we're not, we're kind of in lockdown mode right now. So uh, as soon as we get let set free, we'll have have something else for the uh, we'll get the longer calendar out. Okay, Mr. Ward, anything else? Yeah, we also had one asking about what instruments um, we have. If you go to the band website, eastband.weebly.com, um, it says on the front page, sixth grade, click here, and that should take you to um, a page called Future Band Family, and it has all the instruments with videos that you can watch. Um, that kind of shows you what, what each one sounds like and what they're about. Yeah, and that kind of leads me into where I'm going anyway. The final uh, instrument placements, we're going to try to have Monday through Wednesday done at that time. And then Ms. Chernow, what she'll do with the percussion that gets selected to move on, she will probably Zoom them one at a time and just do some things one at a time. And so uh, that probably won't be completed uh, it could be completed by Wednesday possibly, but I have a feeling it's going to be more like Thursday before she's completely done with that. Um, so the way we do our instruments, we have certain instruments that are school owned instruments. And the reason they are school owned instruments is because they're very, very expensive. Usually tuba, euphonium, those are school instruments, French horn. Those are school owned, school owned instruments. Um, bassoon, oboe, those are school owned instruments. And am I leaving anything out? Well, tenor and Barry, but that's different. They start, everybody, all saxophones start on saxophone, and then we split them out as it goes. So that's it, right? And on those instruments, what we do is we do a yearly fee for those that is actually a district thing, and it's $125, and that's for the whole year. Um, and, and we have to get those things because that really takes care of cleaning it. And this year, we had to UV light everything. We had to fly. It, it, it was pretty, uh, pretty massive uh, cleaning for all the instruments that went out. So um, it's, we have, it's been 125 since I've been here and it hadn't gone up. And so that's pretty cool. And I hope to keep it that way. Um, let me go keep moving on uh, the instrument. So the other instruments are rented uh, and you can find, and you'll get the instrument list of what we need you to get and all that kind of stuff. When you get that list, please be careful where you go. Uh, we have recommended music companies that we suggest. Amazon is a, is an incredible company. They don't watch all of their dealers very well. In other words, somebody bought a $2,400 trumpet, which is the top price for a really nice trumpet and they got a fraud. It was a complete fraudulent instrument. It, and, and if they didn't have directors here that know the difference between a real instrument and a fraud instrument, if they live in the middle of nowhere and they got Billy Bob as their band director, they think they've got a box strat and they've got something that was made in China that just got stamps on it. And you play, it looks pretty, it, everything's great, but you hit a certain notes and they go, they ju it's just really below pitch. Um, and so we've had three fraudulent instruments, two that I know of and one from another school and two of them were here. Uh, so even though Amazon, and you know what, Amazon to their credit, they did take care of it and they took, they did take care of it, but here they didn't, you know, it's, it's a real deal. I mean, there's a lot of, 
uh, fraud things out there now, uh, just copies and stuff. So be very careful. And with what I said earlier about, I don't know, this year, I'm, I'm usually every year I can go, he should be playing that. She should be playing that. I know for sure I'm 100% positive. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure I can, I think I'm right from looking at some of the kids today, you know, I'm, that's what we do. We look at their faces. We watch them as we're doing stuff. And I think we're getting pretty close, but you know, there could be a few mistakes here and there on this year around. So please just be patient with us on that. And that's why the rental system would be so great. There are certain instruments that are easy to buy used and you could find them used. In fact, easily could find them used and that's trumpet and trombone. Those two are pretty easy to find. And you can find pretty good ones. Uh, the hard part about finding used, if it's not from somebody we know, uh, or it's not in the little band family world, um, I'm not sure that it would be worth it because you'd have to put it in the shop. It had to get flushed and cleaned, especially now. You're going to have to flush it and clean it. Um, you're going to end up, and to do that, it's almost two, $300 to flush it and clean it and everything. And then you bought a $100 trumpet and now you're already $400. You know what I mean? So it just, it, it can kind of escalate on you, but um, we will send you out the list that we, and, and we're going to give you um, some companies to, to dig through. In other words, I'm not going to just give you one company, but there is one company that I recommend strongly because they have the best repair and they have the best service that I've seen. But, you know, music, it's art, music and arts is in town and they're a great company. Uh, I just, for me, it's not a negative. Some people love them. I, I don't like the repair. And that's just, you know, that's just kind of the way I am with them. But I think they are a very stout company. Don't get me wrong. They'll, they will give you everything you need. I just recommend another one. You know, music and arts. Some of you have uh, sons and daughters in band and you think they're great, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm all for it. In fact, they will be on our list that you can definitely go to. Um, so um, and we'll, we'll get that out to you on, we're looking at moving all that out on Monday, we hope. And then the, we'll get the last few through the week. And then the, finally the percussion list will be last. The percussion stuff goes through Ms. Chernow. I don't know. She'll give you, once they get, once they get into um, percussion, she will take care of all you. In fact, at that point, I pretty much hand, <laughs> hand them over to Ms. Chernow. She takes care of them at that point. Okay. Um, so the rental process, you're looking at anywhere from uh, $45 a month to $65 a month I th on, on an instrument rental range. Um, and so um, if that turns into an, and I always say this, band should not be this sport that we can't afford. If there is ever an issue, we have some things for people that if there is an issue, and especially in this day and time, uh, we can... There's things we can do. So please don't just, just let us know. I mean, we can't help you unless we know. And, and we'll keep it very confidential and very quiet. We won't let anybody. Um, but even though we live here, I live in Coppell. I was a teacher. Both my kids went through band. Um, and I know how expensive it can get. Uh, and it does. And just because we're in the band world, we don't always, you know, we had to buy the instruments and stuff. So, um, so we understand. So if you need something, let us know. We'll be glad to help you out. Uh, or just let us give us a chance to try to help you if you, if you have some issues going on. Um, when instruments arrive, what we will do, we're going to have them delivered here. So if you've already got an instrument, just keep them off of it. Don't let them mess with it because you don't want to take a, five, a $900 instrument and ruin it. And they will really quick. So we want to show them. So we're going to have the companies deliver it to us here. When we are ready for everybody to get them, get them, what we will do is we will put it, you know, where I told you but that new parking lot in between Mockingbird and East, we will line those dudes up with their names on it. And we give, we're going to give them binders and stuff that they have from us. And then um, hopefully our band shirts will be ready by then too. We'll give them the band shirts and they're just going to come up and pick up all their equipment at one time. Okay. So we'll do that. Uh, kids today asked me, when's that going to happen? I said, well, I, I wish I could tell you, um, I, I'm probably, I'm, I'm going to say we're probably two weeks from Monday out, at least kind of right somewhere in that range, uh, maybe a little longer. Our goal is to have every student on an instrument by September 8th, ready to go full blast. That's our goal. Don't know if it's going to be 
uh, be able to get down, but that's our, that's our goal. Um, as we go into the next phase and we start going face to face, we're, we're, the band world is looking about 25% coming back uh, on September 8th. And then at the end of the nine weeks, you know, the theory is everybody's going to come back. And um, I'll tell you this, I'm, we, we are going through everything we can think of. Uh, to make everybody safe, us safe, them safe. Um, we have a brand new huge band hall that if I have to, I can put 45 kids in here 10 feet apart. Now, the problem is how do I get them in here? <laughs> so, uh, and we know that too. And we have three practice rooms, that, I mean, three uh, rehearsal rooms at East. Uh, the facilities here are incredible. They built them. Uh, some of you that have kids have gone through East about, you know, a few years ago, you won't recognize what we've got here now. Um, it's a beautiful room uh, and we have plenty of space. I believe we can really keep everybody at a distance. What I'm trying to map out and figure out is how to get them in the rooms without having congested spots. And so we are working on that stuff and we're also working on airflow and how the problem with instruments is not uh, how far, like a trumpet does not, like when I play my trumpet, when I do, when I do this, when I play my instrument fall and I do that, the instrument does not, so stuff doesn't just fly out of here. Now it can, <laughs> if I'm really putting air in it, but these kids can't spin their air like that. But if I'm really putting something into it, yeah, it can do that. Uh, the, the actual talking voice and singing voice is the problem or a shout or something like that. A flute can be bad. We got to watch a flute and a clarinet from what I've been told. We've, we've read all these studies. <laughs> a clarinet can be bad. It blows throughout out the instrument a little bit, but, but still these kids aren't spinning their air that fast. Our big problem is up into the AC systems back out. That's our problem. And so, because we've talked about putting plexiglass everywhere, but that's just going to shoot everything straight up right into the vent system. So you need to understand we, Mr. Miller, us, we've got a five phase plan and we're trying to figure this thing out and how are we going to do this? You know, they make masks that, that, that can move the trumpet mouthpiece in and they make bell covers and I'm not sure that's going to make a difference, but if it does, we'll have them. So by the time they get here, we're going to have a plan in place. Right now, we're just reading, research. We're just trying to figure it out just like everybody else. Um, and, and we will be constantly changing. Today, I wore my mask and shield for about 10 minutes. All you doctors and stuff, I don't know how y'all do it, man. I, don't, I work for 10 minutes. My shield and I, the mask is okay. I've gotten used to it. But with the shield on too, whew, that was pretty tough today. So, um, and that's going to be hard for the students all day too. So I'm, I'm, hey, we're going to do what we got to do. And also, um, I will say this again, nobody will be penalized in any way if you need to be home. Uh, we're just going to do the best job we can. That's what we're going to do. Um, so, Mr. Boyd, have you seen any more questions come through that we need to answer? Uh, yeah, a couple. But first, I want to say, um, as far as the safety goes, you're, you're dealing with two dads. Um, and my daughter is currently in the band at East. Mr. Gray had two um, kiddos go through. So we understand. And uh, we're going to take care of your kids. Um, we had the advantage of having Mr. Miller at the high school, who may be um, one of the smartest people we know and also one of the most hardworking, and he is on top of it. Um, and we have the benefit of, you know, they're gonna get um, probably face-to-face -face a little quicker than we will. And so we'll have the benefit of uh, learning from them. Um, and, but, and there's yeah, other schools well, right now going through and we're yeah. learning from them too. I mean, believe me, my eyes are open and we're watching. Um, go ahead, Mr. Boyd, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, we had a question about the rental companies. We're going to send that out um, on Monday. And the way I, I, I envision that is you're going to get an email that's specifically for your kid. Um, so you'll know exactly what to get. Um, yeah. So tap the brakes on that one. We'll, we'll get you taken care of. No worries there. 
Um, yeah, and Mr. Gray, somebody did ask about the same instrument for next year. You want to talk to him about yeah, um, how kids move? Yeah, our goal is to put them on the right instrument and they never move. We don't move instruments. Um, I've done it. I've, I've had it happen twice. And it was successful both times because I, I, the kid and I sat down and talked and we really, you know, he had, to, he had to let me know why he was changing. And, and because of this, they practice all their sixth grade year. When they hit that seventh grade year, they don't want to start all over because that's what will happen. Now, there will be some kids, and, but this is very rare. There will be some kids that can, that can, switch instruments and go back and forth and uh, especially a woodwind instruments. There's a lot of guys that can play clarinet, flute, saxophone. Mr. Boyd can do all that, but that's rare. And that takes, that doesn't happen in sixth and seventh grade. They've got to get good at one thing first. Then we can start doubling on other instruments and stuff. For example, when they hit high school, if they play double reeds, they will be jumping into whatever instrument they want to, for it to be their second instrument, but they don't have to be as proficient on that as they do their primary instrument. So it's not, it's kind of the same, but it's not the same. So we want them to become really good at what they do uh, on one instrument. Um, I do see issues with this year and we will, trust me, I'll see it. If there's a problem, Mr. Boyd and I will both see it and we'll see it very quickly. That's the good thing about the rental world in the rental world. Um, we know these companies well enough that I, they'll even switch out stuff for us and not even, we'll say, hey, so-and-so needs this and they'll switch out packets and stuff. So, all right, any more stuff, Mr. Boyd? We have an awesome question from Carla's iPhone about private lessons. Ah, ooh, I missed that. I had that down, I skipped it, sorry. Told you, awesome question. Awesome question. All right, private lessons, right now, I'm telling you, the private lesson program is saving us right now this one-on-one -on -one virtual thing and i think it's going to be something that um for example my flute teacher moved to germany uh her her husband was in the army reserves and she got transferred to germany and i had to bring in another flute teacher for about a month or two well with all this going on she got moved to colorado springs and she's she told me she called me the other day we we lost our flute teacher and and I'm going to let her stay because she's going to be virtual for the whole, I bet, I bet the lesson program is virtual for the whole year. And here's the reason why at our school, we have seven by six, a seven foot by six foot, something like that of practice rooms. We have some of the largest practice rooms in town. Most of the time private lessons are done in a very small five by five, six by six room. We can't do that right now. Uh, and that's the last phase, bringing the lesson teachers back on. We might not get there this year. So we will be virtual. Now, lessons, they are, I think they're the backbone of who we are. I think they're the most, our lesson staff, besides the flute teacher moving around, we've had the same staff. And we got the same flute teacher back now. We've got five doctoral people, five doctors, five, Dr. Hunt. Dr. Doctor, doctor, Dennis. Doctor, doctor. Yeah, we do. We do. Dr. Dennis, Dr. Hunt, Dr. McCallum, uh, Dr. Coe, and who's the other one? I'm leaving one out. Oh, well, I don't remember. So we have some of the best musicians in this area that do private lessons. And so we're very, very fortunate. And they all work great with us. Um, so I would hold off about another a uh, week or so, but we're allowing certain, especially our lesson teachers, because we trust them. We're allowing them to start one-on-one. -on -one. So I'd give it about a week, let their schedules get all going and they got to do some paperwork to get, get vetted completely back in. And then um, we can definitely start, start signing up for lessons. What we are doing is this, they can do lessons just like they would do in school. Let's say nine weeks, miracles happen and we're all back in class and we're all happy. Everything's back to normal. Um, and, but the lesson teachers aren't vetted back in yet. They can't, that's phase five. They can't come back in yet. And, but what we would do is the student in that class would take their iPad, go into a practice room and have a lesson with their lesson teacher with their iPad. So um, that 30 minutes with a lesson teacher is very, very important. 
Um, the, in the honor wins, it's usually almost 100% take lessons. Uh, but that, that's just, that's honor wins is the top group. And I'd say the second group last year was at what, 70 something percent? 65, 70? We, yeah, 75 or 80. We, it was pretty oh, 80. High. Yeah. And so yeah. we, and we tend to be the, the school that trickles in, <laughs> which I'm okay with that at times because Mr. Boyd and I like starting the foundation. So you, on a normal year, we'd talk about lessons, but I wouldn't be pushing them as hard as I am going to this year. On a normal year, we would get the foundations of the amateurs and things like that really set. Then we'd let this lesson teachers start taking them at their own pace. You know, so um, lessons you are definitely. You want to talk about how the private lessons like work and paying and all that stuff? We have a couple of questions about that. Yeah, the lessons are now that these are people that are paid. You pay directly them. It's their, I guess they're called contract temporary employees kind of a thing. And so they come in and you pay them direct and it's $25 a week on their lessons. And um, they, they get, if they get an, a class lesson, normally they're 30 minute lessons, but if they do it during the class time, they have to split the class or 25 minutes. If it ever gets shorter than that, we make them discount their price for some reason. But, but right now, if you want to do it in class, but they can do it right now at any time. <laughs> You know, so um, their schedules are pretty wide open right now. Um, they will take them through a lot of fundamentals and things like that. Um, I wish I could show you the lesson staff and I wish the kids could meet them because they're, I'm telling you, our lesson staff, they're just great people. They're really a great group of people. We're very fortunate, very fortunate. Did I get all and, those uh, The private lessons are not, um, not required, but um, Again, you're talking to a band dad. <laughs> My daughter plays bassoon. She's been in lessons all three years. Um, I, I don't think you'll find a parent out there, um, a band parent, who says that private lessons weren't um, absolutely amazing for their kids. Um, and it's not a uh, remediation thing. It's a meet you where you are and push you forward. Um, because right now, honestly, with this, this Zoom format, um, we are, your kid may be getting um, called on one time during the class um, because they want us to go through as quickly as we can, you know, and give kids plenty of time so they're not on the computer all the time. But it may be just a quick interaction that we have with them, um, whereas that private lesson is 25, 30 minutes of intense um, work one-on-one. -on -one. Like my daughter's is tomorrow at four o'clock and she'll be sitting here in our uh, music room and her lesson teacher is in Denton. So uh, they, they're not required, but it is um, an amazing resource we have. Yeah, my, I tried to, I'm a brass player. I tried to teach both my kids. With my son, it was great. With my daughter, it was a big mistake. <laughs> so, so we got her to a French horn teacher really quickly, and um, it really made a big difference. Uh, my son and I kind of, I don't know, we, we, we figured it out and did pretty well. So um, anyway, uh, I think, do you have any, let's go through some more questions, Mr. Boyd, before we get out of here, because I'm almost done. Um, I agree with, with Rupa. If you see Rupa's, Mr. Kazaza is amazing. He's, he's got not a, cool, a doctor yet, but I think he's, he's on close. his way. Yeah. I like his last name, Kazaza. Kazaza. It's kind of like Mufasa. Ooh. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, so now like you are, you are, we are unique here at East. Um, I think you've got two guys that have had, like I said, I, both my kids grew up here. His daughter grew up here. We have a perspective that some of the other younger band directors don't have sometimes. And um, we are really both here for, for your, for your guys, for your kids, for your future student performers. We're, we're here for them. I, I'm not here. We've got, I could show you all the trophies in this room. We're the only school in town that's got first divisions in the top band every year since it opened, um, which is crazy. And Mr. Nelson and uh, Mr. Brents and then me, it, all the people that have been here. I mean, we've got UIL trophies that span this whole front. And it really hurt not to get to go to contest last year because we were figuring that would have been 27 years in a row. And so uh, it's a great program. Um, I still think we try to put the students above the program at times. I think it's real important that each individual is taken care of because um, we want them to be great musicians. Just go look at the top band of the high school and you'll see where uh, 
Last year, over 50% was from the East. And so uh, we try to nurture them through. We try to get them to where they belong and just be great musicians and good people. We teach that along the way too. So um, if um, somebody asks, I just- I got about band fee? Oh yeah, band fee, what I'm doing right now, I'm holding off the fees. I'm doing nine weeks at a time. I got enough startup from, from last year because we didn't get to finish the year. I'm kind of watching that. Um, what will happen though, is we will start, the band fee is normally 150, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I will start at 50 and we will watch nine. When I decide to start it up, uh, we'll, we'll do 50 at a time. And that way, if we get shut down, I'm not taking money from you that I shouldn't take, right? So I'm gonna do it $50 uh, at a time. And I'll probably start that um, at the nine weeks when everybody gets back, hopefully. And then we can start from there and then we'll do another one in January and do another one in probably March. Okay, that makes sense? Cool. Um, somebody asked about renting or buying. I would say right now, uh, I, I would, I would rent every, you can always rent for a month. And if things are going really well, then maybe you can buy the used. But um, we do try to push uh, students up to the uh, professional line instruments as quick as possible. Um, so I would rent for as long as I can. Uh, unless you find a really good deal, uh, send me the link. Send me the link. That way I can, I can know, I can have some, I give you some input. All right. Because there are a lot of good used, actually trumpets will be cornets. We use cornets for beginners. They're smaller, they're more durable. And, um, but same with any instrument. Um, just let us look at them if you find something used. Because it, uh, somebody told me one time that cheap can be very expensive. And I think that's, you, we just need to be careful. You could find a used clarinet for 150, but it costs $600 to fix, you know, so. You know, cheap can be very expensive. All right. Looks like we're through, everybody. Um, that's, that's all the questions we had in yep. the chat. All right, guys. Well, um, man, so far we've enjoyed all the classes. I wish we could see them, but, hey, this is the way it is right now. Thank you all for showing up, and looks like we got a good number here. And if you ever want to – if you ever miss one of these, we'll post it on the website and post it on Schoology. So talk to you all soon. See you all later. Bye-bye.